Hello once again. Today's lesson will be one that you would find most useful. I am sure you all have had to deliver a speech at some point or the other in your life. Even if you haven't, you will have to do it in the near future, either at an institute or at your workplace. Writing a speech is no different to anything else you have learned to write. You need to first know your audience and purpose. You can have several purposes. It could be a speech you give at a school event or at an assembly. It could even be a speech given at a wedding or a business conference. There are different types of speeches and it is important that we understand them. Remember, for every type of speech, your audience and purpose can change, which would also mean that the language that you use will also change. Let's look at the different types of speeches and let's briefly look at what we need to consider when writing one. The first type of speech is informative. When writing an informative speech, facts should be presented in an engaging manner. Your main purpose of an informative speech is to make the audience aware of the concepts discussed. Maybe in your school, your principal asks you to deliver an informative speech on COVID precautionary methods. The second type of speech is the persuasive speech. Facts and opinions can be used for this purpose and this type of speech concentrates on convincing the audience to come around to your way of thinking. Let's say that in your school, as, as part of the environmental society, you have been asked to deliver a speech convincing your friends in school about the importance of recycling. You will have to change the way they think and that will require a lot of convincing. You will have to give a persuasive speech. The third type of speech is a speech given at special occasions. Usually, we use this type of speech when we want to pay tribute to a person, a place or an institute. We usually hear such speeches at weddings, parties, at special school functions like Founders Day. While we learn about some of the techniques you can use to make your speech more engaging, let's also look at how you can write it in a way that it encompasses all those key points that you would like to make in your speech. For this, it is absolutely necessary for you to make a rough draft. You can use a flowchart or a mind map for this purpose. I like to use a mind map and on page 19 in your pupil's book, Activity 8, there is an example of a mind map. Let's turn to that page and let's read Activity 8 together. Kamalesh prepared a mind map when organizing his speech. Work in groups to develop the mind map into a speech and write it in your book. As you can see, the topic of the speech Kamalesh has to deliver is challenges make us strong. He has broken each section into different subpoints that he can elaborate on in his speech. He can start off his speech by giving a definition. Then he has decided to talk about a personal experience. This is known as an anecdote. We usually use anecdotes or we refer to personal experiences to make our speech more exciting and believable. Kamalesh seems to also want to introduce his audience to different types of challenges in life. He has also listed out successful incidents. You can make any speech more exciting and credible by relating the points discussed to actual success stories. Kamalesh can most definitely talk briefly about some of the successful individuals who have become strong by facing challenges. Then he has also decided to invite friends to face challenges. It is important that you address the audience during your speech as this creates a strong invisible relationship between yourself and those you are addressing. The final point listed out in the mind map is how challenges can make us strong. This is a great point as it discusses why we should face challenges bravely. In order to make your speech engaging, there are some techniques you can use. To begin with, you can use rhetorical questions. 
Rhetorical questions are used to create a dramatic effect or to make a point rather than to get an answer. This technique really works when you are delivering a persuasive speech. You can also use repetition. You can emphasize on certain points by repeating them. For example, I can say challenges most definitely make you strong. Yes, they make you strong. By repeating strong twice, I am emphasizing on the need to be strong. You can also use facts and statistics to justify the points you made more effectively. You can also use quotes. Quotes by important people make your speech more engaging and it's always good to hear wise, motivational words from those who are successful. When writing your speech, since you are trying to capture the essence of how it would be said out aloud, you will have to use punctuation marks. It's always nice to include punctuation marks to bring out the meaning clearer. You can use the ellipsis, the question mark, the exclamation mark, inverted commas, single inverted commas and dashes. You can also transfer phrases or words that you want to emphasize into capital letters. Now that we have a basic idea about speech writing, let's look at some possible questions from the past papers of your O-level English paper. You will usually get to write a speech in paper 2, test 16. This question carries 15 marks. In the 2015 paper, you are asked to write a speech titled, If I Could Go Back in Time. This will require you to stretch your imagination and write a personal speech on going back in time. Maybe you can use this topic to display your knowledge on the history of Sri Lanka. That way, you can make this speech informative. Test 16 of the 2016 paper also gives the option of a speech. The title given is Internet, the advantages and disadvantages. This too is an informative speech meant to present ideas and information about the Internet. You can include facts and even personal anecdotes or examples to make it engaging. Remember to include both the advantages and the disadvantages. Both sides need to be elaborated on. For this, before writing your speech, you can use either a mind map, like the one we looked at, at the start of this lesson. A mind map really helps you list out your points and you can divide your main points into further sub points. If you do choose a mind map for this question, as a rough draft, it would look something like this. Or you can simply choose to do a brief table dividing the points into advantages and disadvantages. Both these methods will help you figure out the key points that will be included in your speech. Don't forget to use all those language devices we mentioned earlier on in this lesson when you write your speech. In the 2017 paper, the speech topic that they have given is Let's make our school the best in the district. From the title, it is obvious that the speech you write should be a persuasive one. You will have to motivate friends to accept your views on how you can make your school the best. It's always good to first figure out what makes a school the best. You would think that clean classrooms are important, or maybe extracurricular activities like sports or clubs and societies. It could be even the discipline of the students in your school. Or you may want to talk about how your school has the best teachers. It's up to you. The speech that appears in the 2018 paper is titled The Effects of Using Polythene. This could be an informative speech and maybe towards the end you can have persuasive techniques if you want to motivate your colleagues to refrain from using polythene. You can once again use a mind map uh, to list out all the effects. Remember, the sole purpose of this speech is to highlight how polythene has affected society. 
And finally, in the 2019 paper, you are asked to write a speech on the importance of learning English in the modern world. Well, you would be knowing how important English is to you and how important it is in this modern world. Let's brainstorm and come up with some ideas that you could include in your speech. The question is followed by some guidelines that you can use too. English is a global language. What do you mean by this? English is spoken globally and therefore is needed if we are to communicate with the wider world. It is a language of international communication, the media and the internet. English may not be the most spoken language in the world, but it is the official language of 53 countries and is spoken by around 400 million people across the globe. English is also the most common second language. Learning English does not just help us communicate with native speakers of English. Knowing English increases your opportunities in the job market. English language is the language of business. If you are planning on entering the global workforce, you will most definitely need to know English. Speaking English gives you access to different forms of entertainment. It can be a foreign film or TV series that you are enjoying or a concert that you would like to watch. All this is accessible if you know English. If you learn English, you wouldn't need translations or subtitles anymore. So even though it can be a painstaking process, learning English can open you to a world of opportunity. Now, in order to make this speech work, we need to use the structure that we discussed and start off with a brief salutation. We can start by saying, good morning our principal, our teachers and my dear friends. Let's look at how the speech would look. Let's do it together, considering all the points that we discussed. Good morning, our principal, our teachers and my dear friends. Today, at the English Activity Day, I have been asked to deliver a speech on the importance of learning English in the modern world. As you are all aware, we learn English because it will help us in this modern day and age. Today, it is considered to be a global language. What does that mean, you may ask? Well, English is spoken globally and is needed when we communicate internationally. It is a language of international communication, the media and the internet. Even though English may not be the most spoken language in the world, it is the official language of 53 countries and it is spoken by 400 million people across the globe. That means there are a great number of speakers of English in this modern world. Apart from this, knowing English will increase your opportunities in the job market. English is the language of business and if you are planning to enter a global workforce, you will need to learn English. Learning English will also help you in your higher education. More educational prospects will open up once institutes know you are proficient in the language. In addition, speaking English will give you the opportunity to engage with different forms of entertainment. Think about it. If you know English well, you can understand some of the songs that are listened to worldwide. In addition to that, Think about the endless amount of movies that are in English that you can watch and enjoy. If you learn English, you would not need translations or subtitles anymore. Even though learning English is a tiring process that requires a lot of hard work and patience, it is worthwhile on the long run. Learning English will open you to a world of opportunity. You would have noticed that I have used a rhetorical question to engage my audience. I have also used punctuation marks for emphasis. I have also used facts and statistics to highlight the importance of learning English. I am sure you have some understanding of how you can write a speech. 
remember to use the structure and the persuasive techniques discussed in this lesson. Thank you for being a part of today's lesson. If you enjoyed this lesson, please do subscribe to our channel. Have a pleasant day.